And I will pass who I'm talking, a basket with the different kinds of compass in order to put smell.
transmorcera copalífera a morcera original. Uh, I would like to ask you if you have, if you know how is extra extraction method, please raise your hand. No, Bob, you don't count. <laughs> okay, and as well as Bruce. <laughs> then I will explain something about it. And then first, the, the tree selection is very important. It has to be a strong and healthy at least two years uh, since last cutting. And it's made by the end of the dry season, as you can see here. So they mark the tree with a leaf of an oak, quercus lavcoides, and then uh, suspended the leaf of maguey with the different uh, tides, as you can see here. Here is the leaf, and to receive the dri dripping resin. And, and then they, that's the arrow, they heat with the, this instrument called kichala, and then they heat the tree each two days or three days to the resin uh, uh, still dripping. Well, we have different types of copal. The first class copal, that's white copal, that is in the little basket, a little piece, is white, it's clean, it's completely bare, so you can see. That's a good tree, it's manando bien. So you have a, a big bar, and uh, formed by maguey leaf, as you can see here. This is a very good quality copal with a little shoe. They call this shoe, made of mud and cow dung over here, that uh, function as a flux at basis of maguey leaves. Second class copal is broken bars, no good quality, as you can see here. A thin resin and a small bars with inclusions, leaf, dust, etc. So the person that collects its copal is not a very good and professional one. Because when they hit, they make the yellow, they clean each part that they are producing. Mirror Mira is a copal part, as we mentioned, in the matricula de tributos, the payas. And this is a bar section uh, coated with resin and formed by the recruiting of the incisions and is produced through the whole season, as you could see here. This is one hit, another hit, another hit. So the, the plant resin is uh, coming out. And at the end of the season, they take all this section, and this is the mirror that we see here. In the basket, there's a little piece. And then, after that, when they take off all these part, the hole in the, in the bark is like that, and it's called callas. We have come 50 callas in one branch. And if you multiply for two or three, these are quite old trees, maybe 200, maybe 150 years. And so, another kind of copal here you will see is la grimita. A lagrimita is a resin that are formed from resin drops that solidify, solidify and increase in size due to subsequent exudation. Generally, in tears, are attached to the oak leaf, as you can see here. Well, a black opal is produced without human intervention, by, by insects or whatever, and some copal or the copal is exuding another wasp by wasp and then they make their nest, oh sorry, they make their nest with this. In some, in some traditional ethnies, ethnias of Mexico, this is a very important uh, sacred copal. Well, we mentioned that, we mentioned that in the, we are going to study the Osumba Tianguis, where we have been for a long time, and it's included eight states in the trade of copal. <coughs> so the main are Guerrero and Puebla, and in the upper uh, basin, Baza River, and then Morelos. So we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see what is going on here. So in the commercial copal circuit of Azumba, we have been studying from five, uh, eight years ago how, what is going on. Where's the copal come from? Where is going? Who is coming? Who is getting the copal? And then we have found that the recollector or producer of copal of Alto Vaz, Guerrero, 
Uh, and it's very important the different thickness of, the, of their arrows, you will see. And then they take all the copal, all this copal of, the, of that year, to the religious fairs. Several re religious fairs in Puebla, and Moreno states, and finally to Osumba. But if they don't have enough money to survive until the next year, they sell on advance their, their production. And that production is in a lower price, it's called al tiempo. So if I need money, I go with several people that I have known for a long time and ask for money, and then I will pay with copal when I will have it. And then from there, if they don't finish their copal, because there's a lot of copal, could be a lot of copal, and then the price will go down. And then they go to the secondary ferries and the abyss. And from there, they are going to the retailer. And look, it's very important to see the red that the FISPA made in, in all the cases. And I will explain later why. And then the reseller, uh, retailer, excuse me, will go to the retail uh, dealer from different states of Mexico, as you could see the Petrisp as well, and then the second retailer, and then a Osuma retailer in the Petrisp, and finally to the consumer. So the Petrisp is very important. We, we did in the last while until we saw that the many step it was the Petrisp. It was a notch, a very uh, old town, 14th century. It was uh, founded by Xochimilcas and is strategically located from the main routes. Here is the Alto Balsas, where all the copal came out, and here is Mexico City, and it was the Tenochtitlan in the past. So Tepetlisma uh, is here. It's in the past to the main center of redistribution. And marketing. So copal prices in different tianguis. We have been checking different tianguis of the area from the, from the uh, 2005, and we have found that mainly the, the copal membrane was the main one, the powering one, and from more or less is around 250 pesos. And in the tianguis of, of Osumba, it's a very important fair for the Day of the Dead, when there's a lot, thousands of people go there to get their copal and everything they need. And then uh, you can find different kinds of copal, but do you remember which is the first one, the most important, the white one? So it's the main one that arrived there. And you can get everything you need for your feast. So copal prices in Osumba from the same year, uh, 2005, to now, they, they maintain nearly static, and some of them they have increased, not increased. And that's a, a very important thing to say, because the daily wage in Mexico have increased, but the copal has increased price. What is happening with that problem? Well, the copaleros spend at least two months, 60 days, so if they would have paid the, the daily wage of Mexico, they will get 4,000 pesos, that is nothing. You don't live with that kind of money. So in this, at least, if, if you divide this money among the, the uh, cost of the copal, they would need 16 kilos, 16 kilos of copal to survive. And then the 16 kilos, the tree could uh, produce around 300 grams per or more. But in this case, we only put 300 grams. So they will need to tap 53 trees to survive, not to live, to survive. And poverty limit in Mexico is around 4,000 pesos. So they will need double the size of the copal trees to live. And then uh, to live for now uh, 2,000 two, two pesos. So they will need a tree at least three uh, or 4,000 pesos. So what is causing this problem? Well, first, the, the increase of demand for copal has resulted over exploitation of copal trees and diminish the population of uh, copal maguey. Do you remember the copal uh, leaf that they used to receive the copal raising? Well, it's, it's, they don't have that uh, agave anymore. So, but they do have Coca-Cola bottles, 
And now they are using Coca-Cola bottles, as you can see the shape <laughs> over here. That has a problem because it's light, and they move with the, with the air, so some of the resin is not received. And that's why they prefer the, the agave leaves. And uh, so in conclusion, in general, the marketing of copal follows the pre-Spanish roots. The use of copal remains important today, as you can see. And the religious fairs, which attach, may attract many people, are the most important market centers of copal. But the price of copal has not increased along with the cost of the living, hence the copaleros are extracting more copal to meet the necessities, and this is endangering this important uh, product. Today, copal collecting is a temporary and complementary economic activity due to its low retail value, and the over-collection of the agave and mustifolia leaf used by the copal collector in the alto balsas is causing its scarcity. Now they are uh, introducing to plantation. Based upon the comments of copaleros from the Puebla Mistake Zone, a regional plan for sustainable extraction and management is urgently needed, but uh, which can be applied to other regions. So why, that's why a Conavio now has a, a manual that you can, you can uh, see online that uh, for the copaleros, how it's the, west, uh, the best way to collect copal and extract copal without damaging the tree. <coughs> but the, the uh, very old trees are disappearing very fast, and the young trees doesn't produce that much of copal, unfortunately. Thank you very much. Right on time, but there is time for one question. <coughs> yes, Brad. Yes, and uh, are there Places where um, that have different qualities of copal within a species. Are there any places that are known for producing higher quality copal, or is it all just uh, grouped together? Other species doesn't formulate, so they are not producing good kind of copal. And there's another species that produces a, a, a green copal called copal limon, and the smell is like citrus. But this is a very restrict in a very restricted area. So that copal doesn't arrive to any market, to any special market. But the person that knew about copal, they prefer the demo copal. So I'm sure she will be able to answer any questions after the talk. Thank you, Don, and thank you everybody. I hope